I made a Risk of Rain 2 modding video a while back, and it was pretty successful if I do say so myself. Quite a few people were able to mod Risk of Rain 2 on the Steam Deck, but that was a while back and so it seems like there's some newer issues cropping up. So I figured it was a good time to revisit this tutorial. But before that, if you like this video or any other video I make, please like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. Spreading the good gospel of high tech low life lets the YouTube algorithm know that I'm doing well. This assumes you have a Steam copy of Risk of Rain 2. If you pirated Risk of Rain 2, or worse, bought Risk of Rain 2 on the Epic Game Store, then this tutorial may not necessarily work for you. I mean it might work, but this tutorial was made with the Steam version in mind. So first and foremost, you'll need to install Risk of Rain 2. You can either choose your SSD or micro SD card. If you choose to install Risk of Rain 2 on your micro SD card, there is an additional step you need to do. But I'll tell you what to do when we need to get there. After installing Risk of Rain 2, you'll want to go to desktop mode. In desktop mode, you will need to install R2 Modman. R2 Modman is the cornerstone to this entire operation. It's a mod manager for specific titles. There's a Windows version and a native Linux version, which we will be downloading today. You can both set up and download mods directly from this application. If you download this from Thunderstore, it'll come in a zip file with a bunch of different files, including an app image and a .exe file. You'll want to extract all files somewhere. In this case, I'm going to put it in the games folder on my SSD. So we're just going to make a brand new folder for it called, what else? R2 Modman. So now that I've got my folder set up, I'm going to go ahead and extract all of my files to this R2 Modman folder right here. So let's get R2 Modman set up. When you first run R2 Modman, it'll ask you if you trust this program. Press continue. R2 Modman will open up fairly shortly. As you can see here, it doesn't just support Risk of Rain 2, but it supports a number of different games. It's seriously impressive how many games R2 Modman actually supports. Stuff like Bomb Rush Cyberfunk, Brotato, Content Warning, Cult of the Lamb, and many, many other games that you may have played. And even a major AAA title like Titanfall 2. But for now, we'll be focusing on Risk of Rain 2. So you'll want to scroll down to this games list and find Risk of Rain 2. You'll then want to press select game and then select a platform. In this case, we're selecting Steam and then it'll get ready. You'll be taken to this profile selection screen. This quote unquote profile selection screen essentially lets you create different profiles with different mods enabled per profile. Like let's say for example, you have one profile that's fairly balanced. You have a decent selection of mods that are basically balanced around each other. You have a selection of mods that work pretty well. And then you have a separate profile for all of your crazy mods. You know, stuff like playing as Goku in Risk of Rain 2, which by the way is an actual mod. In this case, you can create a brand new profile and name it whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to name it Modded. Do you know that if you want to play the game unmodded, you don't need a separate profile for that. So go ahead and select your profile and then press select profile. And as you can see here, you're in the main program screen. And from here, you can start downloading mods. R2 Modman automatically finds where your Steam install of Risk of Rain 2 is. So you won't need to set things up in that regard. But if you have Risk of Rain 2 installed on your micro SD card and try to launch a modded session of Risk of Rain 2, then you'll see an error message. For whatever reason, R2 Modman looks for compatibility data in your SD card, which by the way, it will never be. But you can trick R2 Modman fairly easily. On your micro SD card, go into Steam Apps and make a new folder called Compat Data. All lowercase, all one word. You'll need to click on this top right button, press Show Hidden Files. Once you do that, you'll see the .steam folder. Go into there, and then in there, go into Steam, and inside that, go into Steam Apps, and then you'll see a folder called Compat Data. And inside this compat data folder, you'll need to find this sequence of numbers, 632360. This is the Steam ID for Risk of Rain 2. You'll need to make a sim link. You can do this by opening your SD card in a brand new tab. Right click and press open new tab. And then inside there, you'll need to go into Steam Apps, go into the compat data folder, and then drag the 632360 folder into compat data, the new one and then press link here. Now you have a sim link on your SD card. This won't affect any functionality whatsoever, but this will fix any issues with R2 Modman. And now, as you can see here, Risk of Rain 2 is now launching. Now that we fixed that issue for micro SD card users, we can start getting mods. 
to download mods, you'll need to click on the online tab. It's here that you'll find all of the mods. You can either search for mods or sort them out by most downloaded and other sorts of categories. You'll see two mods in particular that are basically pinned. Both of these mods are pretty necessary for 99% of the mods in Risk of Rain 2. To download a mod, all you need to do is click on the mod and then press download and then press download with dependencies. And as you can see here, it'll download not only the mod, but also any dependencies the mod needs, you know, extra mods and files that maybe the mod itself needs. So we just downloaded two mods earlier, but both of those are just mod frameworks, you know, stuff that your mods will need to actually access the game itself. So let's say I wanted to download the most popular mods. I can sort by rating, and as you can see here, it shows me all of these mods. All of the most popular mods, or at least mods that people like, like this Goku mod. But I see one that catches my eye, Starstorm 2. If you press the website link, it'll take you to the mod page, and there you'll find more details on the mod itself. So you'll have to scroll down past all of this, but as you can see here, Look, it highlights a bunch of new features, such as new survivors. The Executioner guy looks kind of cool. Oh, there's new items as well. As you can see here, this is a full mod pack with a bunch of new stuff. So look, this looks really cool and I want it, so I'm going to download it and it'll download the mod itself. It'll also download any dependencies the mod needs. To launch your game modded, just press start modded and it'll take a little bit to launch, especially for the very first time, but it will work. So as you can see here, Risk of Rain 2 launches and I even made myself a custom profile for modded gameplay. So if we go into Risk of Rain 2, you'll see some new characters. The Executioner is not a character in Risk of Rain 2, but he is part of that mod pack that I downloaded. So we proved that modding Risk of Rain 2 does work, but how do we get it working in game mode? Well, there's actually two different solutions. The easy way would be to copy this launch argument right here. You know, it starts with dash dash doorstop enabled true. You would copy that into your Risk of Rain launch options and it would automatically start Risk of Rain 2 modded. That's it, you can't copy from this window for some reason, so you'll either have to type out the entire argument or you'll need to use your keyboard shortcuts to copy and then subsequently paste it. This is one method, and yes, the method does work, but it's not my favorite method. Because by default, it just launches the game modded, and you'll have to delete it in order to play it unmodded again, which is kind of a pain in the butt. And in my previous tutorial, I couldn't get R2 Mod Man working in game mode. Mode. But now there's a way. To get started, you'll need to download something called the App Image Launcher. Essentially, this lets you run app images directly in game mode because for whatever reason, app images have a hard time working in game mode. I'll have a link to this utility down below. You'll want to press Release Build 2.2.0 as of the making of this video. You'll want the one that says App Image Launcher Lite 2.2.0 Travis995 yada 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 x8664.appimage. Once you've downloaded it, you'll want to right click it and then press Properties, go to Permission, press Is Executable. To make installation easier, you'll need to move it to your home directory. You'll then want to right click it and then press Open Terminal here. And then here's a little cool trick for you. If you have a mouse or you have some mousing skills, you can actually drag the app image directly into the console. This will automatically put the entire file name in there. Afterwards, you'll need to type in the words install and then press enter. You'll see the app image launcher is setting itself up. And as you can see here, it's been installed successfully. Now we have to move R2 Modman to the Applications folder. In a new Explorer tab, you'll need to open up Home and then go into Applications. In there, you'll need to copy your R2 Modman app image directly into that folder. Now you may be asking yourself, why do I need to do this? Why do I need to do this? Well, it helps out Steam and it also helps out App Image Launcher as well. So what you do now is you want to add R2 Modman as a non-Steam game. So you may see here, it doesn't show up the very first time you do it. So just exit it and then try adding it again. You should see an application called R2 Modman followed by whatever version it is. In this case, it's 3.1.48. Press Add Selected Programs, and now R2 Modman should be in Steam. So as you can see here now, R2 Modman launches perfectly on Steam Deck. Look, it's working. That's never happened before. So R2 Modman is not controller navigatable. So you'll want to change the controller settings. The easiest thing to do is to select a new template. In this case, we're going to select mouse only because you can do most of the things you need to do with mouse. Other than that though, you're set. 
And furthermore, you can launch Risk of Rain 2, modded or vanilla, directly from R2 Mod Man. Now, personally, I don't see the point in starting at vanilla from R2 Mod Man when you can just start it from Steam Vanilla, but whatever. After pressing Start and Modded, it'll automatically launch a Risk of Rain 2 on your Steam Deck, and it will be modded. And you know what, I think it's time we actually try out the Executioner character. The idea behind the Executioner is you can chain kills with him very easily. But he's a totally new character to me, so this might be a little difficult. So yeah, this run ended in disaster, and I didn't even play it in Monsoon difficulty. So yes, I'll have to learn how to play this character, but he seems really cool. So yeah, I'm gonna have to play with this a little more to get better with this guy, but honestly, he's a lot of fun. There's also a lot of other crazy mods that I've tried out in the past too, such as this Deku mod that I've tried out in my previous Risk of Rain tutorial. The mods some people make are just absolutely insane. What's seriously impressive about R2 Mod Man is that it supports a lot of titles, and so this tutorial could be retrofitted for a different game, so long as R2 Mod Man supports it, that is. I'm not gonna show off any other game today, but in the future, if I decide to show off any of these other games, I'll be sure to let you know. I mean, I've already got the instructions for Risk of Rain 2. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high-tech lowlife with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high-tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.